So here I am, diving into Astrobot after my kid practically begged me to get it. Honestly, I didn't need much convincing. I'd played the first game, which felt like a sort of demo for the PS5, and even that left me impressed. Astro's Playroom, the first entry, was this nostalgic celebration of PlayStation's legacy. I mean, it wasn't just a game, it was this beautiful love letter to all the PlayStation consoles that came before, from the PS1 to the PS4. Playing it felt like opening up a time capsule filled with memories from my gaming journey over the years, and I loved how it brought back that sense of wonder, highlighting iconic moments, and even showcasing old accessories in a fresh way. But Astro Bot? This is a whole new level. From the moment I booted it up, I could see this game was not holding back. Visually, Astrobot is breathtaking. I don't say that lightly. The graphics are some of the best I've seen on the PS5, and that's saying a lot. Each level is a vibrant, meticulously designed world full of color and detail. It feels like stepping into an animated movie where every pixel has been polished and perfected to deliver an experience that's as immersive as it is fun. The environments in each level are packed with charm and character, from lush forests to futuristic neon-lit landscapes, each one bursting with detail and creating this feeling of a living, breathing world. And it's not just the visuals that pull you in, it's the story too, simple yet engaging. Astro's mission begins when his ship, the PS5 mothership, breaks down and his tiny robot friends are scattered across various galaxies. Now it's up to him and us to go on this epic rescue mission across these wild imaginative planets. There's a certain charm to the story that keeps you hooked. It's not overly complex, but it has that nostalgic, classic platformer vibe where you just want to jump back in and explore every corner of each world to find those lost bots and bring them home. Let's talk about the DualSense controller though, because this is where the game truly becomes a full sensory experience. The controller doesn't just sit in your hands, it feels like it's part of the adventure. With AstroBot, PlayStation has taken the DualSense to new heights. Every little movement Astro makes, every jump, punch, slide, you feel it. The haptic feedback is just amazing. It's so finely tuned that you can tell exactly what's happening just from how the controller vibrates. And it doesn't stop there. When Astro jumps or lands, the adaptive triggers give this slight tension, adding to the realism, like you're right there with him. The sound design also elevates things to another level. When you hear the sounds coming directly from the controller speaker, it's so satisfying. It's like having this mini surround sound system right there in your hands, and it's especially effective when you're immersed in Astro's world. Whether it's the subtle click of gears, the cheerful sounds of collected items, or little audio cues when Astro lands, every sound brings a level of immersion that's hard to beat. Plus, the gyroscope! When you tilt the controller, you're moving with Astro. It feels so natural and responsive that it almost feels like you're guiding him through the levels with your own hands. One of the things that stood out to me, and what I loved most, is how much inspiration Astrobot takes from classic Nintendo platformers, especially Mario. It's almost like Team Asobi studied what makes those games so universally beloved and then implemented that formula in a way that's distinctly PlayStation. There's this playful charm and creativity in the level designs, the secrets tucked away, the clever little challenges. It's clear they understood the essence of what made Nintendo platformers so iconic. And while it has all these Nin Nintendo-inspired elements, Astrobot still carves out its own identity, offering something fresh and innovative. It's that rare blend where it feels familiar, yet completely new, and that's what makes it so enjoyable. Playing Astrobot also brought back memories from my time with Astro's Playroom. The nostalgia factor is still there, especially if you're a longtime PlayStation fan. It doesn't feel like just another game. It feels like you're part of PlayStation's history and future at the same time. The game's got that warmth and charm that makes you want to explore every single detail, and the references to PlayStation's legacy are like little Easter eggs for fans who've been around since the early days. It's amazing to see how they've grown from that nostalgia-filled intro in Astro's Playroom to creating a full-blown platforming experience that feels so polished and complete.
Now, I won't say it's a flawless game. There are a couple of things some people might find limiting, like the fact that the campaign is on the shorter side, and there's no adjustable difficulty, which could be a downer for those who want a more customized experience. But honestly, for me, those are minor details in what is otherwise such a complete, satisfying game. The joy of playing Astrobot far outweighs any small critiques I might have. In the end, Astrobot isn't just a game, it's a fully immersive experience that showcases what PlayStation is capable of with platformers. Every part of the game, from the beautiful visuals to the expertly crafted controls, has been made with care. It's a sign that PlayStation is reaching for new heights in the genre, creating a game that can proudly stand next to Nintendo's classics while establishing its own legacy. And as someone who loves the polish of Nintendo games and the tech-savvy appeal of PlayStation, Astrobot is the perfect blend of both worlds. It's definitely a must-play, and I'm so glad my kid convinced me to grab it.